Welcome to your guide for navigating a donor-based anatomy fracture. In this presentation, we will discuss some key resources to help you prepare, as well as strategies on how to evaluate each question on your practical before selecting an answer. Please also note that you will see images of anatomical donors in this presentation. For more information about anatomical donation and the etiquette that demonstrates respect for anatomical donors, please refer to the anatomy.org website. Let's start with some resources that you should use before your exam to ensure that you are confident and prepared walking into the test. The first of these are the Gross Anatomy Atlas and the Gross Anatomy Checklist, both of which can be accessed via the instructions on this slide. The Gross Anatomy Atlas contains information about anatomical terminology and the organs of each body system that you will need to know. The Gross Anatomy Checklist is also important to familiarize yourself with as it contains the entire list of items that you can be tested on during the regional competition practical exam. Another great resource is the Virtual Human Dissector or VH Dissector, which you have access to. We will now discuss how to best utilize this tool in preparation for your anatomy practical. Once you launch the VH Dissector, you will encounter this screen. The rightmost panel will be a 3D anatomy image the middle panel will display sectional views, such as axial, sagittal, and coronal sections. And the left panel will contain online lessons. You can move the 3D body image around and the cross sections will move accordingly. The leftmost lesson panel has many great resources, but we're going to focus on the cadaver dissection guide, as it can be very useful in preparing for the regional lab practical exam. This section contains labeled images of relevant anatomical structures and quizzes. Once in the cadaver dissection guide, you will see the same right and middle panels, but the left panel will compartmentalize the body into introduction, back, lower extremities, upper extremities, trunk, and head and neck sections. Subheaders that we suggest you focus on are the bones and quizzes under each section. Next, we have the screen that appears once you click into the upper extremity quiz option. There will be red pins tagging various structures on each image, which you can use to quiz yourself and test your knowledge. When you click on a pin, it will show you the correct answer for the tagged structure. At the upper right corner, you can also zoom in and out to better see structures in the image. And at the left hand side, you can scroll through the different quizzes to assess your understanding. This is an example of what you will see when you click on a bone subheading in the lower extremity compartment. The right panels will isolate the bone you have selected, and the left panel will show that bone in detail. You can navigate to different bony landmarks on that bone using the subheaders on the left. You can also change bones within your compartment by selecting the drop down menu highlighted here. Let's move on to the day of the exam. The lab practical exam is scheduled for the first day of the competition, right after lunch. It is important that you are well nourished and well hydrated prior to the start of the anatomy lab practical. Before beginning the lab practical, you will be introduced to the lab setting and the body donation process. We understand that viewing anatomical donors for the first time can be difficult. If you feel uncomfortable before or during the practical exam, please contact a staff member for help. Additionally, if any assistance of any kind is required during the exam, staff will also be standing by to help. You can view the full day's schedule on the Anata B website. The practical exam will consist of 50 multiple choice questions. These questions will refer to tagged items on structures and organs, on anatomical donors, plastic skeletal models, and histological images. This means you must be able to rapidly shift your thinking between different body compartments and structure types. All tagged structures will be selected from the Anata B Gross Anatomy Checklist. You will have one minute to answer a question before rotating to the next question. After completing the last question, you will be given an extra five minutes to revisit any stations you want to review. We will now discuss four different considerations that you should apply to each question 
on the lab practical exam. The first step is always orienting yourself. When first seeing the tagged structures, there are a few things you can do to orient yourself to the position of the anatomical donor. First, determine if the donor is prone or supine. Then, if the donor is male or female. Next, you can identify if the tagged structure is on the right or left side. Finally, you want to determine if the tagged item is on a limb or on the trunk. If not, you have to then determine which body cavity the pinned item is in. Now that you've oriented yourself, you can begin thinking about what structure types you are looking at. Let's now discuss how to distinguish between different structures by using this image. First, let's orient ourselves. The large muscle on the left side of this image is the pectoralis major, which is reflected or flipped up and out of the way to reveal the neurovascular bundle beneath it circled here in blue. We also see the pectoralis minor muscle located deep to it, and the clavicle highlighted here in yellow. Neurovascular bundles are collections of nerves, veins, and arteries that run near each other. These bundles tend to be deep to muscles, which typically serve as a layer of protection for them. Let's review some tips on identifying each of the components of a neurovascular bundle by using some visible characteristics. A vein is a tubular structure that tends to be darker in color and relatively thin-walled. This is why the blood inside veins tends to be visible. In a neurovascular bundle, the vein is also usually the most superficial structure. The axillary vein is shown here. Next, we have arteries. Arteries are also tubular structures, but they tend to be relatively thicker walled. So the blood inside them is usually not visible, giving them a slightly lighter color. In a neurovascular bundle, the artery tends to be deep to the vein. The axillary artery is indicated in this image. Finally, a nerve is a much flatter structure with a cream colored tinge, as is seen in the lateral pectoral nerve displayed here. It is important to note that on the practical, you will not be able to touch any of the tagged structures. So you should dedicate time to looking at photographs of the anatomy of anatomical donors prior to the regional competition. Please feel free to reference this slide to review some useful tips that we just discussed for recognizing structures. If the pinned item is in a body cavity, it is important to determine which body cavity it is. If the body is in a prone position, the only visible cavity is the vertebral cavity. The spinal cord is located here. If the body is in a supine position, one must determine if it is the thoracic, abdominal, or pelvic body cavity. Next, determine if the pinned item is closer to the midline or located more at the periphery of the body cavity. For example, in the thoracic cavity, the lungs are in the more lateral pleural cavities, while the heart is in the more centrally located pericardial cavity. It will be helpful in the abdominopelvic cavity to visualize the contents organized by a quadrant system. Each of the four quadrants have specific organs associated with them. It will be very helpful to memorize these. Once again, please feel free to reference the tips that we just gave you on this review slide. Now that you have oriented yourself to the donor body and determined whether it is an item on a limb or on the trunk or within a body cavity, it is important to think about what you know because some of the answer choices given may seem quite unlikely to you. For example, some answer choices may be structures located in the upper limb when you know you are looking at a pinned structure on the lower extremity. Eliminate these unlikely choices quickly to narrow down the possibilities. Then focus your attention on the remaining answer choices. If you see a question and you cannot come up with an answer within the time limit, pause, take a breath, and do not panic. Indicate the challenging question on your answer sheet and move on to the next question. Remember, you can return to any questions during the general review period at the end of the practical. Questions will also not be in any given order. 
Thus, it is important to be cognitively prepared to have to answer questions from different anatomical regions. For example, you might start with a bones question, followed by an abdominal organ question, and then a blood vessel question in the upper limb. As such, it is important to start each new question with a renewed focus. Don't dwell on the previous question, regardless of whether you were able to answer it or not. Now, let's walk through two example questions. The question reads, identify the structure tagged with a red pen. So we are being asked to name a structure. Our answer choices are pectoralis major, internal oblique, rectus abdominis, abdominal aorta, and sympathetic chain. So let's take a look at the image we have. The first thing we have to do is orient ourselves by identifying landmarks. In this image, we can see the pectoralis major and the penis. This tells us that we have a supine male donor. We see the arms, upper legs, abdomen, and pectoral region. We can now eliminate the pectoralis major because we can see that it is located significantly superior to our pin on the upper trunk. Our pin is in the trunk region. Our next step is to figure out what kind of structure we have tagged. While we can see some vasculature and nerve tissue, our pin is in a brown striated structure, suggesting it is in a muscle. We can now eliminate the abdominal aorta and sympathetic chain. Finally, we have to decide between the rectus abdominis and internal oblique. We know these are both muscles of the abdominal wall and both are plausible. Therefore, we must consider how lateral or medial that our pin is. Given that the pin is more medial, we can eliminate the internal oblique and conclude that our pinned structure is the rectus abdominis. Now let's take a look at one more example question. The tagged item is an organ in a body cavity. I am certain of this because I can see the edges of where the abdominal wall from the previous question has been removed. Therefore, I can eliminate the internal abdominal oblique as an answer choice. Now, using the quadrant system, I can identify the large lobed organ in the right upper quadrant as the liver, pointed to here by this yellow arrow. Therefore, I can now eliminate the liver as an answer choice, given that it is not the pinned organ. I now see a thin strip-like organ that traverses the midline of the quadrant system, pointed to here by these two yellow arrows. This organ is the pancreas. The liver and the pancreas are both in the abdominal cavity, so I can eliminate the uterus as an answer choice since it is found in the pelvic cavity. So we now see that the pinned structure is in the left upper quadrant. I know that the abdominal aorta is a midline structure, so that answer choice can now too be eliminated. I am left with only one option and the correct answer, the spleen. We sincerely hope that this video has been helpful and wish all of you the best of luck on your exam.